Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS. So let's get into it. The other name that ARDS is sometimes referred to is wet lung. And this is actually very, very serious. It is a life-threatening condition. And in fact, most people who get it will die from it. It has a very high mortality rate. So what's happening in the body when you have this? Fluid is collecting in your alveoli. So remember your alveoli are very important in your lungs because they are the site for gas exchange. So what's happening is they're being full of fluid. So this will decrease the amount of oxygen in the alveoli. This will overall decrease the amount of oxygen in your body. So the alveoli are filled with fluid, therefore they cannot do gas exchange, they cannot be full of oxygen like we need them to be. And over time, this will start affecting all of the systems of your body. So overall, less oxygen in your whole body, which eventually leads to organ failure. And then organ failure is the number one reason people will die from ARDS. And what is the cause of this? This is not something you just catch. It's not like an infection that you just catch. ARDS is a secondary condition. So most people who have this already have something else that's very serious as well. So things like COVID, hospitalized COVID, sepsis, pneumonia, pancreatitis, chest or head trauma. So direct injury to the chest, which causes issues with the lungs, or head trauma, which can cause um, the body not being able to send the signal to your lungs and your respiratory system. Severe burns, drug overdose, smoke inhalation, like with a fire, um, and then sometimes rarely with blood transfusions. So this occurs secondary to one of these things. And the cause influences the mortality. So how severe one of the causes is, is what determines whether the patient is likely to survive this or not. So these patients are very, very sick, but they were already very, very sick. So this is worsening of that. And then another um, thing to note is if your patient is an alcoholic, okay, so they drink a lot of alcohol and they have one of these other things going on, they are the absolute highest risk patients for um, death, for not surviving this. When it comes to the signs and symptoms, of course, they're going to be respiratory in nature. So the big sign, the hallmark sign, is severe shortness of breath. So these patients are having a hard time, labored breathing. So dyspnea, tachypnea, tachycardia. Um, upon auscultation, the nurse will hear ronchi. They might be hypotensive and then have hypercapnia, which if we remember, that is an excessive amount of CO2 in the bloodstream which when we have an excessive amount of CO2 in the bloodstream, it can cause other symptoms like confusion. And then how is this diagnosed? So the first thing they wanna do is make sure this isn't caused by something else. So a lot of the diagnostic criteria have to do with ruling out other causes. So first, making sure they don't have something like heart failure, which could give some other symptoms. Um, they need to have an acute underlying illness or injury, so those causes we've talked about before, like pneumonia or COVID. They need to have lung infiltrates visible on a chest x-ray. And they have to have severe hypoxemic respiratory failure. So those are the four criteria for us to diagnose this. Other things they might want to look at, they'll probably do ABGs. They might do a CT scan, and then an echo just to rule out other cardiac causes. When it comes to our nursing interventions, remember these patients are very, very sick, so they're probably in the ICU. So we are going to be monitoring everything. So of course, their vitals, we're gonna be monitoring their vitals frequently. Strict INO on these patients. They will be given IV fluids, 
but we need to be careful about it, okay? So those fluids are going to need to be restricted because we don't want to make it worse. So keeping an eye on that. Other medications we could possibly give, it kind of depends on the situation and also the underlying cause. So some common medications that are given, uh, meds for pain, um, anti-anxiety medications, meds to treat or prevent infection, uh, sedatives, and then medications to help prevent blood clots from being formed. We're going to do very thorough cardiovascular and respiratory system assessments on these patients, also frequent ones. Some patients benefit from just getting oxygen therapy. Most patients, that's not gonna be enough. Most of these people are very, very ill and need to be on a ventilator. So mechanical ventilation is the most common thing we'll do and we'll use low tidal volume because remember if we did high tidal volume it would cause like the lungs to overexpand, okay which would make it worse um, so we don't want that so mechanical ventilator with a low tidal volume um, we're going to be monitoring their labs so abgs their liver studies um, renal studies um, decreased fluid and they can also benefit from prone positioning so putting the patient in prone position can help with excess uh, drainage, okay? So it can help reduce these symptoms. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is patient education. So after the patient um, survives, okay, the patient is starting to come out of the woods, they're better. They usually don't go home right away, okay? This isn't like, okay, I'm all better and I can go live a normal life. It takes a while to recover from this, uh, a long time. And so many patients go through what's called pulmonary rehab. So instructing them about what to expect and the importance of compliance with that therapy, that's really going to be helpful for them. And also, no smoking. So if they were a smoker before, they're not a smoker anymore, okay? Um, because that will make things worse. So no smoking and making sure they're up to date on their immunizations, infection prevention techniques. That's stuff that's important for our patients to know when they recover and they're ready to go home. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.